All right, welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. This is Captain Adam. We got a great topic for you today, but before we meet the captains, a uh, big shout out to Captain Chucks for all their support and also the Wolf's Den in Scottville, Michigan uh, for this beautiful table and chairs that we're using for uh, this episode. But before we get started here, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll be reminded every time that we uh, produce more videos and you won't miss a thing. So let's meet those captains. Hi, I'm Captain Craig Coleman from Ludington, Michigan. Hi, Captain Dave Yeager here from Ludington, Michigan. All right, so let's let's talk about small boats. Um, you know, 16 to 20 foot boats and fishing salmon, and kind of what are your what are your what how do you fish that differently than you would fish you know the big boat? Well, first of all, for a small boat, you got to pick the right day, <laughs> <laughs> and I've picked the wrong days before, but. Really fishing out of a, a small boat, going out for salmon, just like the big charter boats do, to me, it's, it's, it's different. I don't know what's different about it, but it's more like one-on-one -on -one combat, kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just more, because a big boat, you just feel so much more comfortable, and you have the room and everything like that. But really, as far as the fishing goes, you're not really doing anything really different other than you do on the big charter boats, it's pretty much the same setup, but everything is more narrow. You know, the big boat's got 12 to 14 foot beams. You're dealing with a five foot beam. Yeah. <laughs> so your spread is a lot narrower other than your boards that are way out. But it, it uh, I don't know, my boat, I have two downriggers. That's all I run and I can run four divers and you know, three coppers or leg core, whatever you want on each side. And you got a pretty good spread out. Yeah, for sure. What about uh, what about like speed and control? As far as like well, like my boat, I don't have all the fancy gadgets that you do. <laughs> I don't have down speed, so a lot of that you just gotta kind of get the feel for it. Yeah. And then once you do, you know, you got ground speed on my graph. That's that's really all I have. But a lot um, of it's the angles of the cannonballs. You look at how your divers are pulling. You yeah. Know, if you get going too fast, you won't be able to keep the drags on your divers, sure. or they'll be tripping. Yeah. You know, one of the two. So that's one of the easier way for me is judging by my diver rods how they're pulling. Yeah, that's. I mean, for straightness for me, that it's always even on the big, big boat or small boat. It's mm -hmm. it's looking at really watching the divers, and it's a lot easier. And I said this multiple times, but if you're if both your high divers are the same rod. It does make that, uh, you know, a lot easier to be able to, to dictate. And, you know, if you're, it's like running double divers when you're on a small beam boat. Um, it, it, it's definitely hard. And, and it, you know, if you're getting a lot of tangles. Usually I go to, you know, if I'm going to a one diver setup, it'll be more of a high diver yeah. type setup to get it out away from the boat, get it away from the riggers. The, the big thing, though, like, even if you are running double divers or if you're just running, you know, single divers in, in, um, in downriggers is you can't turn. Hmm. You can't turn a small boat very sharp. You can. But you can't turn with all that stuff in the water. No. And that's why you're getting tangles. And that's one of the hardest things is make a gentle turn in a small boat. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, because it, it still feels gentle, but with that stuff out <clears throat> as far as it is behind you, it's not really a gentle turn. And something that, you know, I don't fish a lot in a small boat um, for salmon, and it's really just because I fish every day with customers, and I don't think they want to go with me on a small <laughs> boat. But uh, um, one thing that I have been doing is using my trolling motor. Um, you know, I have a, I have a, a motor guide, uh, X5, but, you know, putting it on autopilot and, and then letting it steer the front of the boat and then just using my main motor just for speed mm -hmm. you know, and adjusting thing. and I really just get my main motor idle and idled down and then you know adjust my speed by turning the the trolling motor up and down mm -hmm. yeah and it really makes a big difference and, and the control that you get doing that is tremendous because in a small boat <laughs> if you got any kind of wind um, if you let go of the wheel <laughs> A small boat is going to do a 180 on you like instantly. Instantly, yeah. For the trolling motor, you can let go of the wheel. Yep. And uh, it works really, actually, pretty well for using it for like an autopilot. Yep. 
I think that, uh, you know, you got to mess around with it a little bit in, in the day to mess around with it when it's calmer. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you start to find that the trolling motor can't keep up, if you can slow your main motor down so you have more thrust in your, in your trolling motor, it'll, it'll it, you know, make it drive better, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, I'd love to have a bow mount trolling motor on my big boat because <laughs> it wouldn't be steering with the rudders and it'd just be going straight all the time. It'd be amazing. I had a crazy idea one year. I was going to, I talked to the director of the tournament and he said that my boat was eligible to fish. I had to be at 16 foot. At that least. was Manistee, right? Yeah, yep. Manistee <laughs> Pro-Am. So I decided to get into this Pro-Am tournament and we got into the Pro Division because I was a captain and I had fished Pro Division and we were set up out there. It was a shotgun takeoff and someone called me on my little radio that I had in the boat and said that your, the flag on the boat from the tournament flag was bigger than my boat. <laughs> <laughs> but just for being a little boat, it didn't really seem to matter because I think we ended up taking third in that tournament. Yeah, and we against like a pound, pound and point three or something out of first. I mean, I, I think that like people think you have disadvantages. You can't go out in rough water. No. Um, you can't troll in the trough at all. Um, you know, but at the same point, you have, there's a lot of advantages to a small boat. Right. One, you know, I've never seen anybody load their charter boat up on a, up on a trailer and drive to the next port because <laughs> the fishing's better up there. You know, it's just not an option. Um, but, you know, to, to be able to travel, I think, is tremendous. Um, especially if, you know, you know you're going to have a wind out of the south and, and like in Ludington, you could launch in Pentwater and you have all the protection of, mm -hmm. of little, or, you know, little point Sobel. Um, so you know you're going to have some, you know, much better conditions than if you were to go to up to Big Point or something. Well, um, the big, big thing I've been doing with my little boat just recently here and I noticed the big difference is I'm, I'm using a sea bag no matter what the wave conditions are. And obviously, I'm almost considering getting two for like if the waves get three feet or bigger, and it just the the control of the speed is so much better. And I think the surge, the surge. You know, when you when you're in a small boat, you'll notice this, especially if you have divers out. If you're in a small boat and you and you have in a following sea, your divers are creaking, creaking, mm -hmm. creaking, and on a bigger boat they don't in the same size waves. Um, but it's really just that when the the, the mass of the boat you know, it doesn't let the wave push it. Right. And by adding bags, mm -hmm. you're you're kind of giving yourself more drag, more resistance to the to the Tremors waves pushing you. Keeps your speed a little bit more consistent. And it make I think it's easier to turn when you're with bags in. Yeah. Yeah. Um especially to do a nice, easy sweeping turn. Sometimes you have to take your um the bag on the outside of your turn out if you can't turn with the bag in, but um, you know, giving, getting more thrust out of your main motor definitely uh, uh, is an advantage. What about like, uh, what, what's your ideas of uh, rods, rods, and like, what what do you bring? Well, there's been many times I've gone out and going by a report from the captains. You try to keep up on it, and this might have been two days prior. So you go by that report, and that was, you know, let's say uh, 30 to 60 down. Mm -hmm. So you got it. I don't have room for 27 rods like the charter boats do. <laughs> I don't have everything covered from 600 coppers to one colors. <laughs> so you kind of just got to bring what you think is going to work for you. Yeah. And I've gone out and totally brought the wrong stuff. Yeah. The charter boats are next to me catching fish, and I'm like, <laughs> I can't go that deep. But you still have your divers. And you yeah, still your have divers your, and your riggers. You still have your riggers. You can kind of take your boards out of play. Yeah, but for sure. That's how you got to do it. You got to kind of figure, even looking at the water temps. You know, we got the lake maps that you can yep. see the surface temps, and you can kind of gauge whether them fish are going to be in the top part or if they're going to be down deep. And well, when you have the weather buoy too, mm -hmm. um, at least in Ludington, our weather buoy has a thermal. Uh, reader underneath it and you can check that and I mean it's not it's not a hundred percent but if the thermal's at 70 feet on the weather buoy mm -hmm. you can be pretty certain as you slide from 85 to 130 feet it's going to be somewhere in the same realm mm -hmm. um, for sure yeah I mean you know that 
charter boats or the big boats are nice. I, I have, you know, probably a similar quantity of tackle to Captain Chuck's in the boat. You know, if I need something, it's here. I have well, it. You, you need to kind of look at what you're going to go targeting too. Sure. If you're going to go offshore and target steelhead, you know, you're going to bring your ones through your seven colors, but a, a bigger boat can have them and they can go king fishing and go, oh, the kings aren't biting, we're going steelhead fishing. Yeah. You know, Just we're on the smaller boat, you can't make them transitions as easy because you don't have the number of rods to bring with you. So what about like organization? Like what's your process? You get a fish on, what are you, what are your moves that you're making? Because obviously you don't just have everything right there. You know, you have a, you have a lot of equipment that you're, are you moving stuff out of the way? Are you getting the net to a certain location in the boat? Well, it's obviously you can't have as much tackle as you do. <laughs> so my boat don't hold very much. It is trickier to net fish because your riggers are usually shorter, mm -hmm. you know, and then you don't have the beam width like Dave was talking about. So they're tighter together. You got your divers right there. So everything is really close. I mean, it's fish, challenging. Fish can turn and make a mess, but you got sometimes you got to move a diver out of the way. But you do that on the big boat too. Yeah. So it's. It's just a little more challenging to net out the back because we have an outboard sitting out the back where most of the big boats have the inboards. Where well, you, don't you, know, have them. you know, I'm fishing on innuendo. We have four or three, you know, 400 mm -hmm. horse outboards on the back. So it's kind of brings you back to that yeah. that same idea of, of uh, you know, you're trying to bring the fish to the side and, and uh, not forcing the fish to get there, but you, right. you kind of got to make them committed. One thing that we don't do on that boat is is try to slow down. Because when you slow down, I think you give a lot of advantage to the fish. The drag of the fish, of the boat moving forward on the fish is not there. Right. And right. then they can swim. They can get outside your outside your um, divers and stuff. But this is the same thing. If the fish is outside your diver, you move your diver to the other side or you move it out of the way or, or clear it or whatever you got to do. The big thing I've seen though is people will get so caught up into fighting the fish that nobody pays attention to the boat. Yeah. And if the wind catches the bow of a little boat, it will turn it really fast on them. Yeah. And, and you got big trouble. And then you got a lot of problems because on top of the fish, getting you tangle everything else up. You know. So a lot of it's paying attention to where the boat's still going. Yeah. And not just focus well, and, on the fish itself. And you have three guys in the boat not seven right too so you, you know it, that's a lot less eyeballs and usually only one net yeah so you <laughs> usually the only one net. <laughs> whoever's got the second one on sometimes you have to say just take your time yeah. you got to give me a minute clear the net <laughs> especially plugs right yeah you know we used to i you know used to do a lot of fishing my 16 footer and uh you know we would just calf fish if we had to or whatever we had to do um you know, it is messy if you have carpet. But yeah. fishing in a small boat, like when the salmon come into the periods, that's probably some of the funnest. Oh yeah. Combat fishing, that's out there. Well, we had some fun <laughs> combat fishing in the big boat. Yeah. <laughs> but the little boat, when you get into them areas, because they're smaller, you can maneuver they easier. Yeah, they, sh they definitely yeah. shine, yeah. especially with the, all the guys jigging. Yeah. You know, you can still troll in a small boat. I can't even hardly fit through right. through yeah. PM Lake and, anymore. Um, you know, but th it's cool to see people being able to get out without right. without the same uh, massive amount of equipment that you need to be able to troll. So, you know, everybody gets their shot at the salmon. That's cool. The biggest thing I encountered this fall was that uh, fishing skein on a bobber. And yeah. I'm going to get you out doing that. <laughs> I want to do it. Because yeah. that is... I have some buddies that run trips doing it, and they, they you know, I, it's just... It, it's like September. It's hard to get me to go fishing if I don't have to go fishing. Yeah, you start After you do out. this, oh, you'll be so to go. Many, Yeah, I, I really <laughs> like throwing thunder sticks in the river too. I always really enjoyed, you know, casting crankbaits in the river. It's a lot of fun. Something about when that bobber goes down and you set the hook, it's like yeah. the world's biggest bluegill you ever left. <laughs> Bring back the kid in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I hope that uh, this kind of answers. I, I know a lot of guys ask me to talk about small boats, and, and these guys are two of the best guys that you'll ever see in a small boat. And, uh, I mean, Dave's literally as competitive as anybody in a charter boat in a small boat. So, uh, and Craig's been fishing the, the small boats. My whole life. Your whole life, yeah. yeah. 
you know, and, and a charter captain as well, and ran a lot of trips. I mean, Dave, even when you were running trips all the time, you had a small boat, right? Right. Yeah. I didn't the have the a Red boat. Devil. Was that what? <laughs> Little Devil. Little Devil. Little Devil. The pin, Pinion. Twenty-seven. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I hope that uh, this answers some of your questions. If you if you have a, a particular question, always feel free to to send it over to me. Um, either in a comment on the video or, or as an email. Um, the big thanks to Captain Chucks uh, for all their support and, and as well as uh, the Wolf's Den for this uh, beautiful table. This is, this is something. <laughs> That's a nice table. Monkey Pod. It's from South America. Really? Pretty cool stuff, yeah. Yep. And, and anyways, for the tables and chairs, if you're in Scottville area, uh, head on over there, check that place out. The other thing, too, is if you guys ever have any questions, you can always stop into Captain Chuck's, and they'll be more than happy to help you. Yeah, and there's a lot of times some of us are there. I yeah. mean, and we're always approachable people. You know, I, I, I don't, I, most guys that are, you know, the top of their game, Sam and Fisherman, they like to talk just as much as the, the guys that go once a month or, right. or whatever, you know, we'll get out a couple times a year. So, you know, always approach them and, and ask your questions. We're all very willing to help. So you like getting feedback from somebody, you know, hey, that bait you told me about, you know, I caught a fish on it, you know, yeah. they're all excited. It's, that's what's fun to see. That's what it's all about. You know, get, get kids out there. You yeah, know? Absolutely. You got an extra seat and you can take a kid and, you know, this year I, I took uh, Matt Ewing's son out and, and we were just going out to fish and, and kind of worked the bugs out of the big boat and and you know watching that kid reel and fish he was having time of his life you know and it's right. something i kind of just take for granted and do all the time but you know right. make something special happen for somebody yep but anyways uh thanks for tuning in uh like i said if you have any questions send them our way uh hit that like button share this video uh smash the subscribe I don't know. I'm not good at this. <laughs> the social media part of it anyways. But uh, if you want to see all our videos in the future, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that reminder bell. And uh, until we come up with some more topics, we'll, we'll be trying to get out there and maybe fishing in February. The new, we'll the new trolling season. It's going to be yeah. 50 degrees next week. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys soon.